Hello, today I'm going to show you how to paint poppies on a cliff top. There's very little drawing in this picture, and if there's very little drawing, it's always good to have a plan. So I've gone through my paint box and selected some colours that I think I will use to give me a start. First thing I'm going to do is to add a sky, which will add the atmosphere of a summer's day. Just adding a warm blue, I've mixed French ultramarine with turquoise. And the poppies are the focal point of the picture, so I don't actually want a complicated sky. Just going to make the sky fairly simple. I will put a list of the colours I'm using in the description. To make the picture look a bit deeper, I'm making the sky slightly darker on the right than the left. Just the same paint, but a bit stronger just moving it across. I have also added some latex to the sea because there's a couple of white stripes that are quite difficult to leave a sincere space for so it's a good idea to pop those in. Whilst the sky is drying I'm going to put the foreground in which the poppies are growing in my reference in a crop so I'm going to put some green in in different shades to get rid of the white paper. Mixed up various greens using sap green and Naples yellow and yellow ochre and just going to put stripes in just to represent a crop and it doesn't matter if it skips over the page. Just give the indication that there's a crop growing. Just keep mixing them up. Just fill the whole foreground. Just adding a little bit of raw sienna now just to make some summer crop colours. I'm going to go through sideways now with the Naples yellow. Just make it slightly more random as though the wind's catching the crop. And I don't want a straight line so I'm trying to make a lazy curve here of the join between the two and I need to send it into where the poppies are going to be so i'm just going to get the brush just take the paint for a walk not too much because i want the color of the poppies to be dominant and the same at the back the next field more naples yellow again because it makes a nice summer color and just pop it in gently just to claim space and get rid of the white paper going up to the cliff top rocks where the grass in the next field meets the rocky outcrop it's a different color so i'm just making that a bit richer with some yellow ochre and taking it back to the middle I don't want the poppies to be showing white paper through them so i'm just going to get a very weak color and just put it across here it's all going to be covered but it's just a question of a bit of harmony between the colors red and green suit each other they make each other look more dominant complementary colors on a painting so i'm doing the stroke sideways because i'm going to do the poppies from front to back at a slight angle just the weakest imaginable paint, just running it between the other colours. For the sea, I've just warmed up some French ultramarine with a little bit of Brazilian crimson and some Naples yellow, just to make it slightly different colour. I've now got to let everything dry before I put the, the red on and my principal way of putting the red on is to use a rigger and in case you haven't got a rigger a number one brush the rigger is just a bit longer the hairs are longer and it holds more paint and just flick the poppies on in that direction just put some gentle idea of rocks in which i'm just making gray and then i'll tint in a moment i'll just get the shape in first and all this will help add to the brightness of the red poppies just making random shapes 
and there's some further back here as well. I need to do these because I can't put my hand on the on the poppies when they're wet to go back and do them. And I've got the Cornish hedge, which is a stone wall at the end of the field, and that's a good. It's a good contrast for the red. I'll just pop that in, and it disappears halfway because the poppies are over the top of it in the reference I've used. And I need to put the hillside in at the background as well, again, because I can't easily reach over it. So it's a long way off, so I'm going to use yellow ochre, a little bit of sap green. And there's not much that's hanging on near the edge of the cliff, so I'm just going to drop the colour in and then I'll tint it. I'm going to get some French ultramarine and some sap green. Let's make a dark colour, but not too strong. Just put it in where there's some shadows. And while it's wet, drop some indigo in. Because there's a shadow on the side of the cliff. So that will find its own way down and make it darker. And the same with the rocks here. Just a little bit of indigo. I just trim up the edges a little bit, just make sure that's all as I want. And then this dark green goes round the corner here. And I'll just use some yellow ochre to blend those two together. And I've got a very, very dark line where it meets the horizon. And then coming forward to more traditional field colours. So I'm going to mix the sap green and the Naples yellow again. Just bring it all forward. The next hillside slightly nearer. So I've added a little bit of burnt umber to the mix. And again, it goes down to a shady cliff. So I'm just going to put the indigo in just to make it really dark. And then it changes again back to crops. Put those in. And then I've got some fields and I need a hedge. So I'm just going to mix up some dark indigo and a little bit of the homemade grey together. Just go around the field edges just to give a suggestion. And I can come back to the front rocks here again that have had a moment to dry and put some shadows on them. The right hand side is in shadow, so I'm going to use Payne's Grey this time. Get a little bit darker just on the front faces. A couple of them in the field. And I've just put a little bit more shadow and change the tone slightly in the very far off places and I now need to work on this field which I won't be able to lean over in a minute so I'm going to use Viridian and Naples Yellow together to make a nice summer green that's not too dark and pop it in from the left around the hedge keep it going to the middle I've got some I'm going to put some poppies in the middle so I'm going to leave a little gap for that. I'll do is just put some strokes in to show that there's something there and then going further across different light different conditions and it's a much richer colour so I'm going to use yellow ochre and a little bit of sap green very weak and just Make a richer colour towards the right and it needs to be a bit darker where it meets the sea. A bit in from the brush and it will find its own route. There's a little bit more here. I'm working flat so I'm under control with it. So now I can put a little bit more in here where it meets the red poppies I'm going to put in. Just a hint of something here just to break it up a little bit. 
And I'm going to, I've got two reds, one's more transparent than another. I'll put a list of the colours in the description. Still going with the number three brush. I'm just going to gently give a suggestion of a line. Now I'm going to change to a smaller brush. I'm going to change to a number one with the other red. And just drop a little bit in. And then clean the brush off completely and dry it. And just take the paint that's already there for a little walk. And then I'm going to add some yellow ochre on the edge just to bleed it out a little bit. And the colours are just happily merge. And just some water just to lose it a little bit. Now I'm moving forward to the poppies. So I'm going to clean my palette off, make a big space for the reds. And I'm going to use the traditional number one brush and just gently take the brush for a walk. Just like that, as though the crop's blowing in the wind. And the other red. Just drop it in. Try and keep the brush up a little bit if your lines are merging too much. And some cadmium orange. Just vary it all. Keep going round all the different colours, vary the strokes slightly. So I'm now going at a different angle. I'm now changed to the rigger, which is better for doing long streaks, but it's not so good for picking the paint up from a tiny pan. So you might choose to make some up into a well. Just go round and round. If you've got too much in one area, just pick it up and move it. And I'll change back to the number one shorter brush just to put a bit more detail in. And a little bit of Brazilian crimson just for a bit of shadow. Keep going around all the different colours. Just making the pattern of a crop. Coming back, working on all of it at once gives a better finish than doing one area meticulously. Come back into the first area a little bit. The poppies do tend to grow in drifts. So what I'm going to do is use the same brush, but just do a little dot just to show where they're starting and finishing. So I'm continuing just doing one colour over another, a few sideways strokes just to give variation so the crop's being blown in the wind. Mixing a little bit of Brazilian crimson and cadmium orange in just to give variety. Not all lines, some dots. Just to give more interest. But try and keep it as though it's all being blown the same direction by the wind. I'm just doing some of the ones on the left hand side, a slightly different angle just to give more interest to the composition. Add some different colour on top. You can use a rigger, but I find I've got more control with the just normal length hairs. Whatever you've got, you can do it with. Don't have to rush out and buy anything. And then bringing it back. If 
few more dots in the foreground. Just a swathes of colour. I've gone back to the rigger now just to give a bit of variety and I'm just putting in a few bits of Azillion Crimson in the foreground just to give a bit more shape and form and I'm going to go back shortly with some green and do the same thing and then changing to some orange just put a much broader line in just to bring it back going into the red It's as though somebody's just scattered a few extra seeds in one place. And I'm just doing a few sideways strokes just to give bigger clumps of colour. So I want it to look random not look as though they've all been lined up going back to the number one brush again it's going along in the middle just to make it look a bigger area of color It's just breaking it all up, but you can still see that it looks a crop. I'm now working on the foreground again with a number three brush. And I'm just going to add a little bit more green in between the lines of poppies. I'm using sap green and chrome yellow just to make a few little lines just to show it is a possible crop you know you can just see random changes in colour then just plain water just move the paint around a little just to give a suggestion different colour I think I'm going to use a bigger brush just give some sideways marks just to warm it up a little bit when you put down such a big area of a bright color you have to adjust the tones around it as you go as one color dominates another I'm just trying to make random patterns as though it's a field that's being blown a crop that's being blown in the wind it's a very dry brush just Let's me cover the area without being laboured. And then lastly, a small brush, stronger paint, and just put a few little dots in. Take into the red, just to show that the crops are merging. And bringing them forward a bit of water just to give a few lost edges tickle the odd piece of green in not too much just a little bit you get the water just let it down a fraction so it's more of a vague edge and the same over here just a tiny bit even though I painted the paper green it still looks a little bit white in places so it's just gently changes the tones a little a tiny little bit more out here Just wet one side of it. 
I just wanted a little bit of reflection there just to break it up. I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you'll go and find some poppies yourself. There are some at the moment at Newquay, but I'm sure there's lots elsewhere. Thank you very much for watching.